Hi everyone, welcome back to hearing more stories about Moses, more stories from the Bible, more stories from the book of Exodus. Now last week we learned about how Moses was out in the desert and he saw a burning bush and how God gave him a message to go into back into Egypt and to talk to the people of Israel and also to ask the Pharaoh to let the people go. Now remember we talked about how God made Moses on purpose for a purpose and this was the reason that Moses was created. He was created so that he could be the leader of the people of Israel. Now when Moses got back to Israel it was actually really hard. It was really hard for people to believe him in the beginning, even the people of Israel to believe him when he had told them that he had a message from God. Now, God had given him those special things, like I told you about last week, like turning his staff into a snake. And well, I forgot to tell you this one, but he did put his hand into his cloak. And when he pulled it out, it looked like he had a skin disease. And then when he put it back in and pulled it out, it was healed. Well, Moses did those things and he showed the people of Israel that God was with him and it was time for them to leave Egypt. Well, as you can imagine, the people of Israel were so excited. They couldn't believe it. They had been slaves for over 400 years and they had witnessed and been a part of and felt some really terrible, terrible things. If you think back to the story of when Moses was born, that was just part of the horrible things that happened to the people of Israel while living in Egypt. They were ready to go to the land that God had promised Abraham and then Isaac and then Jacob saying that they would one day go back to that land. They were really excited. So Moses and Aaron went excitedly before the king to tell him that God had said to let the people go. Well, if you can imagine, now the people of Israel were like the workhorses. They did all of the hard work in Egypt. Do you think that the Pharaoh, the guy that's in control, is going to be like, sure, you can take the million people that are working in Egypt and just take them away. We don't need them anymore. Do you think the Pharaoh is just going to be okay with that? No, he was not okay with that. And he wanted to prove that he was still in charge and that he was the boss and that he was, he, he wanted the the Israelites to just like get really mad at Moses and Aaron. And so he told them that they were no longer able to be supplied the supplies they need to make the bricks that they were made to make, to build the buildings they were supposed to make. They had to go get the supplies themselves and they weren't supposed to make any less bricks. Well, as you can imagine, the people of Israel were very discouraged and they were pretty determined to tell Aaron and Moses to not go before Pharaoh anymore because if this is what's going to happen, if this is God letting the people go, then that is not what they wanted to be a part of. Well, Moses and Aaron did feel very called by God and God did show them that they were supposed to do other things to show the Pharaoh that he, God is in control. God is the boss of all things, and although Pharaoh thought he was pretty powerful, God was about to show himself even more powerful than anything they could have imagined. So Moses and Aaron went before Pharaoh again, and they began this series of different things that happened to the people of Egypt and a little bit in Israel of the different things that happened in the land that God was showing his power to the people. He turned water into blood and people couldn't drink it. He had frogs, like swarms of frogs, like so many frogs you couldn't probably even walk. Like it's one thing to like catch a frog, but can you imagine going to bed and your bed is full of frogs? I don't think I would like that. The Bible says that when that plague was over, they had piles of frogs everywhere and they were very stinky. Ugh, not good. They had flies. You know when there's a fly buzzing around your ear or like you're out at a campsite or something and there's flies buzzing around? Isn't that annoying? Well, there were so many flies everywhere. And then there were gnats, these other little bugs, and there was locusts, and there was hail, and there was boils on their arm, and there was their livestock that died, and there was What else was there? There was a whole, there was nine things that happened to the people in Egypt. There was darkness in the land. This one's really cool. There was darkness in the land of Egypt where the people in Egypt lived, but the people of Israel lived in a specific area in Egypt and there was sun there. Like there was light over Israel, but there was darkness 
over Egypt, like so dark you couldn't even like see your hand in front of your face. Isn't that amazing? Like God was showing the people, both of Israel and of Egypt, how powerful and strong and amazing that he is. But through it all, the Pharaoh, every time Moses would pray for the plague to go away, um, because the Pharaoh would be like, sure, sure, you can go, like just make this plague go away. Um, Moses would pray, the plague would go away, and then Pharaoh would change his mind every time. And Moses was getting tired of it. The people of Israel were getting tired of it. But God had a plan. He had a plan to show the entire world who he is and what he's like through each one of these plagues. Well, the very last one is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing that happened. And it was one where God said to the people of Israel, and we've talked about this story a little bit, especially around Easter time, because it's a very important story at Easter time. It's the story of Passover. And what God had instructed the people of Israel was to prepare a really special meal. And they were to prepare themselves to leave the land of Egypt. They were to eat their meal ready. They were with their sandals on and their travel clothes on and packed up and ready to go. They were supposed to be ready to leave at a moment's notice that they weren't even to put any yeast in their bread. Because when you put yeast in bread, it makes it rise. And so they needed to have bread that was going to cook super fast. And they did all of these things. And one of the most important things that they had to do, so they had all these other things, but they took the blood of a lamb and they put it over their doorposts. So they were showing on the outside that they believed on the inside that God would do what he said he would do. And God said that anyone that didn't have a blood of a lamb over their door, their firstborn son was going to die in that household. And that's exactly what happened in the land of Egypt. It was so sad. The people in Egypt were, it was just awful for them. And the Pharaoh finally said, go, just leave, take whatever you want and go. We don't want you here anymore. God had shown himself in all kinds of ways that he is in charge of the weather, he's in charge of the animals, he's in charge of the land, he's in charge of people's lives and death. He is in charge of all things. And the people of Israel saw that and witnessed it and were a part of it. And so did the people of Egypt. The people of Israel all packed up and they left. It was like almost a million, over a million people, they think, left Egypt that day. Can you imagine that many people going in a caravan? Whew! We're going to talk more about what that might have been like next week. But just an amazing thing that God showed his power to the people. Now, I want to talk about Moses for a minute here. Because there's something really neat about Moses in this, about his personality, about who God made him to be, and how God showed him that he can be persistent. He can't not to give up right away when it gets hard. Sometimes it's easy when God asks us to do something that's hard that we want to give up right away because it's hard. And it was hard for Moses. Pharaoh wasn't listening. The people were upset. Both the people in Israel and the people in Egypt, they were all upset. They all didn't want all these things happening to them. And everybody was mad at Moses. But Moses remembered that God was with him, that God had a plan, and God kept on walking with him. And Moses kept turning back to God to remember what is true, that God was with him and he had a plan. So even though it was hard, he could keep going. And the same thing is true for us. Sometimes hard things happen. Hard things happen in our life, or sometimes God asks us to do something hard. But we can remember that he is with us. If he's asked us to do it, he's going to be there with us every step of the way, just like he was there with Moses every step of the way, even though he got turned down many, many times by Pharaoh, and it really made a difference in the people's lives. Even though people were upset at him, he knew what God had asked him to do, and he kept going. God was with Moses, so Moses knew that, and he kept going even when it was hard. Well, that's all for our story today. I look forward to next week where we'll talk a little bit more about Moses and we'll talk about the people leaving Egypt and what that could have been like for them. All right, everyone. Talk to you later.
Bye. Hi, hello, welcome. I've uh, gathered us all here in the library today to do some important work. Work with words. I love words. I love words so much. I just love learning and reading and learning more words. Well, the most important words we can ever learn are in the Bible. That's right. And today's words are found in 2 Thessalonians 2.15a. What does that A mean again? Just the start of the verse. You're right. Here are all of the words. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you. The important words today in our verse are stand firm. Can you stand up? Stand strong. Stand firm. Yes, that's right. Sometimes we have to stand up for what is right or what God asks us to do. Let's say the words one more time. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you. 2 Thessalonians 2.15a. That's all I have today. Myrna out. So for today's activity, we are going to be drawing a landscape. Um, I think you're going to draw as a farmer's field, Nora. Some plants growing. And then we are going to make it hail on your drawing because hail was one of the plagues that God sent when Pharaoh wouldn't let his people go. And there was also darkness. Yeah. But we're going to do the hail, a hail picture, right? Yeah. So you can draw a landscape or draw a field um, because the hail destroyed all their crops and all their growing things. And then our hail is going to be rice. So once you have your picture drawn, we will put glue all over and sprinkle rice to look like the hail on it. Yeah. I'm gonna stand my ground. No, I will not be moved because I know what's right. And that's what I'm gonna do when everyone around tries to drag me down. I'm and gonna some will fall off and that's fine. Ground. That's a good idea. Now let's see your photo. Another activity you, you guys could do is to test your perseverance. Now, when Moses went to Pharaoh and asked if um, he would let God's people go, Pharaoh said no. And Moses didn't just say, oh, well, didn't work and give up. Moses went back to Pharaoh again and again and again. He never gave up. He had perseverance. Uh, so we are going to see how tall of a tower we can build with some blocks we have at our house. And when it falls over, are we going to give up? No, we're going to try again and see if we can make it. Let's see if we can use all our blocks. Do you think we can do it? Yeah. It's going to take a lot of perseverance. Let's try. In your love I am secure And I'm standing on your promises And I'll always trust in you Is that all the blocks? Yeah. 